I am so excited to be joined by one of my very good friends from my time as an admissions officer, Rebecca Scheller. She is the Associate Dean for Admissions and Financial Aid at the University of Wisconsin Law School, and we are going to be spending some time today talking just a little bit about her journey through law school and into the admissions practice, as well as some of the really wonderful things that Wisconsin Law has got going on. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am thrilled to be talking with you and to learn a little bit more about you and about Wisconsin law. So very first off, can you tell us just a little bit about yourself and how you started working in law school admissions and how you chose Wisconsin? Sure, absolutely. And first, I guess the thanks goes to you. I love all of the, the projects that you all are working on and these breaking barriers videos hopefully help make the process a little bit more accessible for law school applicants nationwide. So thanks for the invitation to do this today. A little bit about myself. I'm Rebecca Scheller. I serve as the Associate Dean for Admissions and Financial Aid here at the University of Wisconsin Law School. And our law school is in the center of the University of Wisconsin campus, uh, so right behind me is kind of the main quad area on our campus. I am originally from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. My dad is from Iowa. My mom is from Puerto Rico, so settled here in, in the Midwest. I went to undergrad at Wisconsin and also did my law degree at Wisconsin, so I'm a, a double badger and benefited from the diploma privilege here at Wisconsin. So we're the, we're the only state in the country that allows students to take a certain course load here, which pretty much everybody does. And then if you get a C average or better, you automatically get waved into the Wisconsin bar. So I'm a beneficiary of the Wisconsin diploma privilege and practiced here after I graduated from law school. I have been working in law school admissions for, I guess this is the start of my 16th year. So I've, I've been around for a little while and I've done many different things during my career in admissions. So I've been involved with our State Bar's diversity efforts. I currently serve on the LSAC Board of Trustees. This is my second time doing service with LSAC. I've served on a number of campus committees as well. Often the work that I do aligns with my own goals here in the admissions office, but also kind of my personal interests as well. So yes, after I graduated from law school, I practiced for a short period in time and then came back here to work at the law school, which I've been doing since 2008. So many people that I know that ended up in admissions started in practice, they went to law school and they, you know, they got to do the lawyer thing for a little bit. And then they're like, nah, I'm done. I want to move into higher education. And so far, everyone I know that has made the switch has liked it, which is hopefully still the same for you. Practice is exhilarating in its own ways, but getting to work <laughs> with students at this really exciting time in their lives, there's nothing quite like it. To that end, what is your favorite part about working in admissions? My favorite part of working in admissions is absolutely working with students. And it means that I get to travel to many different parts of the country and talk with prospective students. I get to visit different college campuses and I get to meet students at this point in their lives when they are kind of choosing their next adventure. And for some of them, it might be, again, kind of pursuing the traditional JD degree. For others, they may be pursuing non-JD degree programming. A lot of them though are really ultimately coming away with a similar goal, and that is opening up new opportunities. And for many of them, that means finding the next tool that will help them to change the world and advance their own goals as well. So it's undoubtedly getting to work with students, getting to travel around the country and also around the world. Some of our prospective LLM and SJD students as well. But no matter where I am, whether it's here in Wisconsin or in Taiwan, it's always amazing to meet people who you just know are going to be change makers. I love that. That was definitely one of my favorite parts in working in admissions, getting to meet all of these people who have such bright futures ahead of them and then helping them on that path to find the right place for them to start making those changes. As you may have found out, we at Barrier Breakers are focused on making sure that first generation and underrepresented students have some extra application support that a lot of the times they don't always get. And one of the things that we really love when we talk to law schools is to see how y'all also do that same type of support for first generation students, for students who may be coming from under-resourced places. They may not see a lot of people that look like them in the legal profession. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about some of the programs that Wisconsin's got going on that help support students that are in that situation. Yes, absolutely. And again, just kudos to Barrier Breakers for really taking the lead in this space, you know, even in partnership with the law schools. I think this is an area that, of course, we know has tremendous need and will continue to have tremendous need well into the future. So here at Wisconsin, we are so fortunate here in the admissions office. We have such great partnerships with our student organizations. So 
Undoubtedly, our first-generation student organization is a critical partner in a lot of the work that we do. So last year, we have two lead student ambassadors that work here in the admissions office, and one of them was the president of the first-generation student organization. And so we kind of had a front row seat to some of the concerns that first-generation law students are facing, but also we had a voice in our ear kind of informing us here in the admissions office ways that we could better reach and support prospective first generation and underrepresented students. So there's that group. We also have a number, of course, of different affinity groups. So there's the, I was very active in the Latino Law Students Association, which is now called La Alianza. And there's our Bolsa Student Organization, Black Law Students Association, our Indigenous Law Students Association, Middle Eastern Law Students Association, and I am missing one of them, Asian Law Students Association another one with a new name. So we have very strong relationships with all of those very important student organizations. They are very visible in our admissions process. They serve on panels for us. They are willing and eager to connect with prospective students to help them kind of walk through not just the application process itself, but also walk through their own experiences as law students so that our prospective students visualize themselves as law students in general, hopefully here at Wisconsin. We also on the application include questions that address those first generation elements. So both whether or not someone is first generation to graduate from college or book college, but then also whether or not they're first generation to go to law school. We see a lot of people like that. We know that law, there's a lot of kind of a generational element. When you see people out in practice, they may come from generations of families that have been lawyers. That's very different from my own personal experience. My dad did not go to college. My mom did, but came here as an immigrant. And so even my own kind of personal background really, I guess, informs my eagerness to help support these students. Again, we have our student organizations that help us. We glean information from the application. And then we meet very often one-on-one -on -one with students to help them understand the application process, to walk them through it, and to help them understand how they can best position themselves for admission, as well as obtaining scholarship funding too. So it's kind of a multifaceted approach in how we support both first generation and in general underrepresented students. I love that. One of the things I saw a lot was those first generation college or first generation law students when I was still working in the Appalachian region. So many of our students were coming from families who had been blue collar workers. And half the time it was like, college is not a thing we talk about. Certainly yeah. not professional school. So having that extra degree of support, that extra attention paid, I think makes a huge, huge difference. And I love hearing that your student ambassador from last cycle happened to be the president of the first generation student association. That's always wonderful. I know for me, it was always really nice that I had students that were comfortable enough to be like, so I saw you do this thing. I have a thought. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Which hopefully this will help some of our future applicants understand that admissions people are not scary. Yes. It's the other reason I like doing this. I was like, I swear we're nice people. Completely. But yes, I think <laughs> that, is, that is one of the great things. Again, what, what you all are doing is just mm -hmm. kind of like demystifying the process. And part of that is mm -hmm. letting people know that we are people too. And we mm -hmm. care about prospective students. And mm -hmm. many of us come from similar backgrounds and want to help be the shoulders that they can stand on to get to that next level. Exactly. One of the other things that I'd love to hear about, I know that every school is just a little different, but would love to know if you've got any advice for the students that may be watching this right now that are thinking about, you know, they're putting the finishing touches on their applications, they're getting ready to send them in now, or they're planning to apply in the next year or so. What is like the biggest piece of advice that you would want to give them? Oh gosh, it's hard to choose just one piece. I think the most common- you do like piece a couple. Of... Okay, I'll give, I'll give a couple. I'll give a couple. We'll couple. Um, so I think the most common piece of advice is definitely to proofread as much as you can. And of course, follow directions. And, and if you can have an additional reader maybe that's your mom or your brother just to kind of go through to you know it's one of these things where when I'm writing documents and I'm kind of looking at them I try to revise them myself but oftentimes I gloss over it because I've looked at it for so many times so I think having an external kind of reviewer if you can do that that'll really help you to fine-tune and again kind of refine your application materials I think another thing would be to apply early if you can if your materials are ready and if you feel satisfied with where they are including your LSAT score and your GPA all of those things. So I recommend that people apply early. Every year we run out of seats toward the end of the cycle and, and hopefully the wait list shakes out in an applicant's favor. But we often see people who apply April 1, which is our deadline. And had they applied back in you know November or December even, they totally would have been admitted. Then we get the April 1 application and we're like, oh, we're kind of full and we, we can't risk over enrolling. We have to put this person on the wait list and we'll mm -hmm. see how it shakes out over the summer. 
And then I would say, maybe lastly is to, as we kind of talked about before, is admissions people, we are, so here's the secret. We're actually all friends, which I know you know Alice people friends, but we are also really nice people and we want to help you. And that also includes often being as generous as we can with application fee waivers. So reaching out to us for guidance and for help, but also asking about application fee waivers that can save you anywhere from, sometimes it's one of the, the lower priced ones, but ours is $60. Some law school applications are 100 plus dollars. And if you just reach out inquiring about an application fee waiver, most often, not always, but most often, that'll save you some money in the process. So those would be my three, maybe tidbits of advice for people who are going to be applying uh, this cycle. I can't tell you how many times I have the conversation where I said, no, no, admissions people were friendly with one another. Yes. And yes, fee waivers are not a huge deal. Right. Worst right. case scenario, they're going to tell you no, but that doesn't, that doesn't change anything else. You're in no worse shape off. You just exactly. might have saved $60. It seems yes. like everyone's always surprised. And I don't understand why, because I feel like we've been saying that for years. We have, we have corporations of applicants will come through. So. I guess, I guess. So we've done the advice piece. The other thing that I guess, you know, might come from some of that advice that you gave, what are the most common mistakes that you see in applications lately? I would say, again, it's that applying late in the cycle when it's like, uh, you see that application come in late and again, you can't admit them because you're already approaching being full. So there's that piece of it. And then I would say the reviewing your materials every year, it's always the same school. You know, we see one or two where they say, you know, they, they go on and on about, you know, maybe telling us their personal story, which is amazing. And then at the very end, they say, and that's why I want to attend X law school. I won't name the other law school, but I don't want to, again, they're all friends, um, but they name this other law school every single time. And it's great to know that they're applying to that law school as well, but it reflects really a kind of the attention to detail piece, which is so critical in law school. And given how many applications we get and that there are fewer seats than the number of applications, sometimes the application decision can, the initial decision can turn on attention to detail. So I would say timing, attention to detail and kind of proofreading, those are probably the most common mistakes that, that I see. I would love to meet the person that worked in admissions that hasn't gotten that personal statement that's beautiful, it sounds great, and then you get to that last paragraph and it's like, I'm really excited to apply to not your school. Yeah, exactly. Cool, cool. I'm so glad for you. So glad for you. This is not that. One of the other things, so kind of on the same talk to the admissions people, we're nice, we like to help. That's what our job is in yeah. most cases is to help applicants through the process. Are there, maybe not is there one, but are there a couple of questions that you wish applicants would ask more frequently? Like, is there something that people seem to miss that would be so easy to just answer if they asked? <laughs> So here's something that we haven't yet, you know, we're just embarking on this new admission cycle. So I'm going to anticipate that this is what my response will be very soon. So what question do I wish more students asked during the admission process? You know, obviously there was this big Supreme Court case that just came out and obviously law schools are going to comply with the law, which means that we can no longer use race as part of the admission process. I worry that applicants might for this coming cycle, that they might not be aware that they can still talk about that as it relates to their identity and the characteristics and skills and qualities that they could then bring to the law school classroom. That is still permissible through the Supreme Court's decision. Again, they didn't fully override Grutter versus Bollinger in this SFFA case, these SFFA cases that just came out. So I'm hopeful that students will not be shy or feel like they shouldn't talk about those types of things if it pertains to them, as well as other qualities that they may have, because I think that's going to be that's still really helpful information. Again, not just race, but race if it's in a greater context of the skills and qualities that they bring to the classroom. I'm hopeful that students will be asking about that because that will be important for admission teams as we kind of put together these classes and weave together the classes that have these different dimensions that we're looking for in a 1L class. So yeah, so I'm kind of maybe getting ahead of myself a little bit, but given you know, what we're seeing so far, I think that's something that we're going to want applicants to be asking about more often is how can they appropriately convey that in the application so that they still can highlight these pieces of their identity as it relates to skills and qualities that we bring. I know we've had a ton of students that I've been seeing asking questions about like, what am I even allowed to talk about it still? And emphatically, yes, you are. Please, yeah. please don't hide that part of yourself. It's always nice to hear it backed up by somebody who works in admissions. This has been awesome. Is there anything kind of last parting words that you want to say about Wisconsin, about anything that you guys have going on, encouraging applicants? Like how can they, how can students engage with you guys? 
Yeah, they can feel free to engage with us in many different ways. So we're on Instagram. Actually, our Instagram is a pretty fun one and we've gotten a lot of attention recently. So it's UW Law Admissions again on Instagram. That's one way to do it. You can email us directly as well at admissions at law.wisc.edu. So W-I-S-C, which four letters of Wisconsin. Students can also just email me directly. Again, I mentioned at the beginning of this that I, of course, you know, in this role of making decisions, but I have a real personal interest based on my own personal history of making sure that students who are first generation, underrepresented, students who maybe aren't coming from a, a family line of, of lawyers who may be able to guide them, making sure that this process is clear, transparent, accessible in every way. So I hope that students would consider just emailing me directly as well. And, and my email address is rebecca.scheller at wisc.edu. You know, it is our privilege, it is my privilege to get to work with prospective students. Again, it's my favorite part of the process. So I hope that people you know, will find us accessible in that way. And you asked about some things that we have going on here at Wisconsin. I mentioned our diploma privilege. So we're the only state in the country where you don't have to take the bar if you come here. And that also applies at the federal level. So for students who want to practice immigration law, for example, they just need a license and they can be waived in through the Wisconsin diploma privilege. We are, you can't tell from behind here, but we're also in a, a state capital and in walking distance, we have our Dean County Circuit Court. There's the Federal Court, Court of Appeals and the Wisconsin Supreme Court, as well as the governor's office, the legislature. And that's all within walking distance in that direction. And it, you know, Madison itself is just a really exciting place to be, especially during election season. We we're kind of the center of the universe every election season. So law, of course, goes hand in hand with a lot of that. And it's great to kind of be, you know, living that experience when you're a law student during those times of, of year. I love that. Thank you so, so much for taking time out of your day to spend with me. It's been great to catch up. I know I don't get to see everyone out on the road anymore, but I do love that I can bring you guys into my office every now and again. And yeah, thank you so much for sharing all of your wisdom, all the things that Wisconsin's got going on and the ways that y'all are helping students like the ones that we try to support here at Barrier Breakers. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you and, and your audience. And yeah, let me know okay. if there's anything I can do to help you further. Thank y'all so much for joining us today. Hopefully you guys have learned some helpful new tips and some interesting things about what Wisconsin law has to offer as a law school, as well as the ways that they help support applicants throughout this process as well. If you think this video is helpful, please like and subscribe. If you have a friend who's interested in law school and maybe hasn't considered going to Wisconsin yet, please feel free to share. Any questions or comments that you may have, please leave them below and we'll make sure that we include any and all of the contact information that was mentioned in the video below. Thank you.